this is Ron Mallet, and he is going to build a time machine. And he was motivated, we'll get him up. There he is right there, he's going to build a time machine. So after losing his beloved father when he was only 10 years old, Ron Mallet turned to the great H.G. Wells and the physicist Albert Einstein. They inspired imminent career as his imminent career as a theoretical physicist and his lifelong ambition to build a time machine. Professor Ronald Mallet thinks he has cracked time travel. The secret, he says, is in twisting the fabric of space time with a ring of rotating lasers, lasers to make a loop of time that would allow you to travel backwards. This reporting is coming from the Guardian. I'm just giddy about this and it will take a lot more explaining and experiments we get that but after a half a century of work the 77 year old astrophysicist has got that down pat his claim is not as ridiculous as it might seem entire academic departments such as the center for time at the university of sydney are dedicated to studying the possibility of time travel massachusetts institute of technology better known as mit is working on a time reversal machine to detect dark matter. And Professor Mallet still idolizes his dad who passed away of a heart attack and thinks about him every single day. And those of us who have ever lost a loved one, I'm sure that you can absolutely relate to what Professor Mallet is feeling. I adored him. This is Professor Mullet on his father. I adored him. One of the great pleasures for me was meeting him when he got off the subway and carrying his toolbox home with him. He just literally lit up the room when he came in. I mean, man, there's such love for his dad to make this the study of his career. I'm I'm excited. Listen, this is this is a beautiful thing. One to hear about, you know, an African American. Uh, astrophysics is, is one thing, but to hear that this came out of love, a love for a black his, a black man, his father, which we don't hear a lot, and it's in this is not normal news for us. Um, so it is wonderful, but it's also a wonderful story for kids. How you could take fiction and belief and hard work and make it something amazing like this. Um, so yeah, I am I am super dope. I love science fiction, but to see science fiction become science nonfiction because of the work of a black man is powerful to me. And as 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 laughable that we think about time travel or trying to wrap our head around space time bending, um, it is wonderful to see that it is on the cusp. The problem though, some of the problems of America is, is still in the story, right? This brother had these ideas since the 80s, since the 80s, but was afraid to talk about them because he knew white scientists would have clowned them, white America would have clowned them, and he would have been you know, suicide for his work. So it's absolutely wonderful to see him stick with this work and persevere. And then, you know, like he said, crack the code of time, time travel, which is mind blowing to me. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I don't know if you saw, there was a, there's a movie right now on Netflix called I'll See You Tomorrow. And it is about time travel. It was directed by the one and only Spike Lee. It is so good. So if you have not watched that, I recommend it. And I recommend it to all of our viewers, but it is about time tra travel and is these uh, high school uh, uh, burgeoning scientists there in high school, two black children who actually travel in time. They've created a gadget that helps them travel in time. I don't want to give too much of it away, but it is so, so, so good. So I, I thought about that when we were uh, working on this segment right here. I'm just absolutely giddy about this thing. And when Professor Mullet's dad died, his world was flipped upside down. And we know that that can happen, especially when a parent dies. And he was only 10 years old at the time. His family was forced to move and the trauma of it began to sink in. One day as Mallet and his brothers were walking around their new neighborhood to meet friends, they saw four white boys playing nearby and approached them to say hello. When they got closer, one of the kids spat the N word at them. No one had ever called Mallet that before. Something in him snapped and he punched the boy until he apologized. That was the professor, he snapped. He wasn't the professor then and he, he snapped. Without the funds to go straight to college, 
he decided to join the Air Force. After the Air Force, Professor Mollett enrolled at Pennsylvania State University and became one of the first African Americans to receive a PhD in physics. It wasn't until the mid 90s when people were starting to talk about the possibility of time travel that Mallet felt ready to be more open about his endeavor. Heart problems meant he had to have angioplasty surgery and he spent his months of recovery pouring over his research. Mallet found his eureka moment in a black hole. Oh my God. So again, many thanks to the Guardian for writing such a spectacular article. And even more thanks, Mayor, to Professor Mallet for daring to dream really, really big. Yeah, indeed. And I, and I think again, like I, I just keep hearing all of I, I got cold chills when you read the part about someone calling him the N-word simply because that story could have ended completely different from him. We know he was in uh, Pennsylvania. Some parts of Pennsylvania home some of the largest uh, Klan chapters. And and I think about my dad's story, who was the son of a sharecropper. That's how he got his first felony conviction, right? So yeah. my boy called his mama, his my grandmother, that and slapped her, and he responded. And because of that, he got a felony conviction. So wow, wow to all of this. And uh, black perseverance is all over this story, and it's wonderful. Yeah, it is all over this story. We're going to stay tuned. We're going to keep up with Professor Mallet, baby. Great things are happening indeed.